Howdy, Tinker Nerds. Sorry, I should have encrypted that. Howdy, hey, Inker Nerds Tay. On this channel, I do a lot with SSH, or as it's referred to commonly by me, and I'm drafting up a video on SSH tunneling, so I figured it would probably be a good idea to explain what SSH is and how to use it. Look at me being a responsible. Back in the swinging 60s, no Xbox, no mobiles, no internet, not a single luxury. Like Robinson Caruso, it's primitive as can be. Computers first began talking to each other through networks. So researchers started experimenting with this new way of communicating, and they developed a set of rules or protocols called Telnet, where a user on one computer could take control of another computer computer without being in its vicinity. It became a really popular tool, but the only problem was it wasn't really secure. Anyone online could intercept and read the data you were sending. So in the mid-90s, Telnet spawned a more secure successor called Secure Shell, or where Telnet was like writing a note and sending it to your neighbor and anyone standing in between could read it, SSH had a different approach. First, you and your neighbor agree to use a briefcase. Then you put your note inside the briefcase, put a lock on it, and send it to your neighbor. Since your neighbor doesn't have your key, he sticks his own lock on it with his own key and sends it back to you. You then remove your lock and send it back where your neighbor can then unlock his lock and pull out the note. So even though the briefcase could be intercepted, it remains locked the entire time that it's in transit. All right, enough talking, let's get that train rolling. Okay, so the first thing we need is a computer running an SSH server. And this is gonna be the computer that we want to control. And you can set up an SSH server on basically any platform. For a Mac, you can enable remote login through the sharing preferences panel. On Linux, you can install open SSH server and then check to see if it's running. On the Raspberry Pi, you can go into the Raspi config options, interfaces, and then enable SSH. And then for updated versions of Windows 10, you can go into apps and features, manage optional features, add a feature, and then install the open SSH server. Then you'll need to go into the services, find open SSH, set it to auto start on boot, and then start it for this session. On Android, you can install the simple SSHD app, and then there's nothing available on iOS at the moment because Apple likes to lock it down. We got an SSH server. That's neato, gang. Now, before we can connect to that SSH server, we need to install SSH software on whatever device that we're gonna use to connect. So here we go again. For Mac, Linux, and Raspberry Pi, it should be enabled by default. On updated versions of Windows 10, it may be enabled by default, but you can check by going into apps and features to see if it is. If it isn't, then go back into manage optional features, add features, and install it. And then you can also use Putty, which is a free fan favorite. On Android and iOS, you can install an app like Terminus to get SSH functionality. Now, assuming that your device of choice is on the same network as your server, you can open up a command prompt or terminal and log into your SSH server by typing SSH, the username used to log into your server, the at symbol, and then your server's IP address. When you hit enter, it should ask you if you're willing to trust the server, and then it'll prompt you for a password, which should be the password used to log into your server. Now you should be logged in to the server's SSH interface. We're in! What now? Well, now we can use terminal commands to navigate, edit, and manipulate files. And the commands you use will be different depending on what operating system you decided to install the server on. Here's a quick rundown on some of the more useful Linux and Mac commands. If you want some useful Windows commands, you can find those in the video description. ls lists a directory, man opens up the manual, mkdir will make a new directory, cd changes the directory to that file path, cd dot dot will go up a directory, touch changes the access date file or creates a file if it doesn't exist, 
MV will move a file from one location to another. CP will copy a file from one location to another. RM removes a file. RMDIR removes a directory. And Nano is a good text editor for editing files, although some people swear by the Vim editor. And WGET is a command for grabbing and downloading almost any file from a network. There's a lot of cool things that you can do with SSH, and while I'll try to cover some of them on my channel, I can't cover all of them. So if you're curious, you can always try Googling. For my next video after the holidays, I'm gonna show you how you can tunnel traffic through SSH using a method called SSH tunneling. What's your favorite SSH trick? Let me know in the comments below. If you have any ideas, you can submit or vote for your favorites at tinkernut.com slash ideas. You can click here to watch more videos like this, and if you got any value out of my show and would like to give some value back, please feel free to donate at patreon.com slash tinkernut. All right, that's it for this tutorial. For more, go to youtube.com slash tinkernut.